Okay then my friends, so the aim of the game here is to link up a Firebase backend to our Flutter app because Firebase is going to help us to take care of things like authentication and storing data in a database on the back end. And so we need to link up our Flutter application that we're creating to this Firebase backend. So we're going to go through that process in this video. Now the first thing you need to do is go to firebase.google.com and then create a free account once you've done that, click on go to console and this is going to list your current projects. I've already got two, but if this is the first time you've created an account, you won't have any yet. You want to create a new project by clicking add project. And the first thing we need to do is give our project a name. Now, just a word of warning, Firebase does like to change the design of its website weekly, it seems in my case, but it doesn't mean that the service has changed. It just means that it's changing the UI. So you might see something different, but the process is going to be very similar. But anyway, we need to give this project a name. I'm going to call this Ninja Brew Crew and then continue. And then down here, you can uncheck that because we don't really need analytics and then create the project. This is just going to take a minute or so to create this project for us. OK, then. So once that's done, click on continue and you're going to see this kind of like a control area for your Firebase container or Firebase project. So we have all of these different links on the left to set up different features of our Firebase backend, things like authentication or the database or storage, etc. And we also have these options right here to set up a new app for this backend. So we do want to do that. We want to set up a new Android app for our backend. So let's click on this Android icon right here. And we need to give this first of all a package name. Now, if you've used Android Studio to create a new Flutter uh, application in the past, then when you create that, you have to specify that package name at the start, and it's going to be that value. But in VS Code, we didn't do that. It automatically creates this value for us, but you can find it. It's inside the Android folder, then go into app and then open build.gradle. And you're going to see if you scroll down this thing right here, application ID. Let me just zoom in a little bit so you can see this. And this thing right here, this is the application ID value. So at the minute, we can see that this is com.thenetninja.brewcrew, but I have actually entered that in here manually. Now, for you, it should be something like com.example.whatever you called your app. So just change the example bit to your name or your website or something like that. It just has to be unique. What I'm going to do is copy this value right here, and then I'm going to paste it into this field. And that is going to be our package name. Now we have to give this a nickname. Well, it's optional, but I'm going to give it a nickname of Brew Crew, like so. Oops, there we go. And then this bit right here, we don't need to fill in because we're not going to be using Google sign in or phone number support. So we can just register the app like so. And then the next step is to download this Google services.json file. This is a file we're going to place in our project in this folder structure so that when our project starts in the emulator or on the phone, then this Google services.json file is going to tell that project what backend to connect to on Firebase. It's going to act as like an identifier so it knows to connect to our backend right here. So make sure you download that and then it should only take a second to download. When it does, just grab it and you want to paste it over here inside your project. Now we paste it inside this app folder right here. So just grab it and scoot it over to this app folder inside the Android folder right there. OK, so that's the first step taken care of. Now let's carry on go to next. And now we need to add a couple of snippets to some different files in our project as well. Now at this point, I want you to make sure that you use exactly the same version numbers as me. Because when you're setting up Firebase in a Flutter app, there are certain things that can go wrong with different versions of different things. But if you use all of the same versions of everything that I use, then hopefully that's going to minimize that risk. So first of all, we want to place this thing right here, this particular class path inside our build.gradle file in the project root. So let me copy this and go to our project. Now we have a build.gradle file right here, but it's not in the project root. So let's just get rid of this app thing right here. 
and you want to go down to this build.gradle thing right here. This is the one we want to add it to. So inside dependencies, just paste this in. Now I'm going to change this to 4.0.1. That is the version that we're going to go with in this series. Now there could be slight problems if you use a different version because sometimes, like I say, when you're setting up Firebase with Flutter, different things can conflict with one another. So if you want to make sure there's no problems, make sure your version is the same as mine, 4.0.1. Okay, so let's move on. The next thing we need to do is grab this thing right here, this plugin. So copy that, and we need to add that at the bottom of this file inside the project, then the app, then build.gradle. So this time around, we want to go into the app folder, then build.gradle, and we want to come to the bottom, and we want to paste that in right at the bottom right here. So this time, it's this build.gradle and not the other one. So make sure you get those the right way around. I'm going to save this, and in fact, I'm just going to scroll up, and I'm going to change the minimum SDK version as well to 21. So we're not going as far back into the past with our support. So make sure you do that as well. This dates back to around about 2014, I think, version 21. So it does go back a fair few years. So now if we save that, I want to open up my main.dart file, if I can find it in all of this mess now. So open that up. Then I'm going to click F5 to run this, like so. Let me just cross that off. And then when it's ready, it'll open up inside this emulator. So. At the minute, we just want to make sure that everything is still working, and that is a good sign. If you get some errors, it means you've probably done something wrong at some point, but hopefully, fingers crossed, this should run with no errors. Okay, and the app works, woohoo! So, that means that we've kind of set everything up correctly, and if you just open your console and go to debug console, as long as there's nothing kind of red in here, then you should be fine to carry on. So we're kind of halfway there now. We've now connected our Flutter application with Firebase as a backend. So now we're free to start communicating with that backend. But in order to do that properly, we're going to have to now install a couple of Flutter packages so that we can interact with the Firebase backend appropriately in a Flutter application. So the first thing I'm going to add is this thing right here, Firebase Auth. So if we go to installing, we can see right here, we want to grab this thing, Firebase Auth, copy that, take note of the version number, that's what I'm using, and I can minimize that. Then if I go down to this thing over here and go to the pubspec.yaml file, we want to scroll down to our dependencies, and at the bottom of those, we can just add in Firebase Auth. Now, the next package I want to install is the Cloud Firestore. So let me zoom that over here go to installing and grab this thing. I'm going to copy that and cross it off and I'm going to paste that underneath here and save it. And if we now refresh, we can see it's getting those packages. If we now refresh, hopefully everything should still be working the same and we can see everything still works. And in the debug console, we see no errors. So there we go, my friends. Now we have Firebase set up for our application so that we can start to interact with it on the back end. There's actually one more thing we need to do in this video, and that's just to go back to our Firebase console and finish this setup. So click Next right now, and then click on Continue to Console, and now we can see this Brew Crew app right up here. So that's all sorted now. So in the next video, what I want to do is just take a step back so that we can have a bit of a bird's eye view of how we're going to structure our application and talk about what different widgets we're going to use and where. So we'll talk about that in the next video.